All right, here we are. What's up, everybody? Hello. Um, hello. Hello. <laughs> it's four of us, us who work starting. on Darkest Dungeon, and uh, today we're gonna do some pigman animals. And Kier's always bugging me to start from complete scratch. Uh, I'm not totally wild about doing it, but uh, I'm gonna do it because I just got back from camping and didn't have time to prepare anything. And this is what's next on my task list. How'd camping go? Uh, it was good, but I was thinking about work a lot. <laughs> did you run, did you run out of provisions? No, it was camping at my parents' place. With lots of oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm doing pigmen, and uh, they live in the Warrens. And there's three sizes. There's two ones, a two, and then a boss. Um, so when I'm doing a faction, I try to design for shape, so I'm going to try and not just repeat the same guy with different armor. Cool. Right and I saw what the heck? Like that guy, what, so he's... Yeah, what's the big... Is he a force? The, is that that's the, the boss. Yeah. Nice. Dude, check that's this out. Book. I googled Pigman. What is this? So awesome. <laughs> oh god. Who made this and why? Oh. No. Oh. Shout out to Krabes. Isn't Krabes that incredible? Krabes. That's so disgusting. This is from uh, Machine for Pigs from uh that game I was telling you about. Spoilers, it's got pig guys in it. Spoilers, it does have pigs. Yeah, that's awesome. I get that's gotta be the two space guy. I like the website, I am bored dot com. It is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see what's going on here. I don't think he's bored. That's a <laughs> fucking. He, that's a huge picture of this thing. It I wonder how big it is. It might be like life size. I feel Maybe like I'm gonna get a virus on this website. Yeah, we should yeah. back up. We, this we is a little show CD. <laughs> Maybe it's a cosplay costume. I, don't know. I think it's a 3D costume. model. I think it's somebody's modeling portfolio. Anyway, I think it's an yeah, awesome that's, idea. That's a Centaur good, Piggy. That's a wow. Whoa. It's very porcine skin color. <laughs> I know. I can't wait to get it off my screen, truth be told. <laughs> uh, I have a hard time drawing. Like, as an artist, just getting stuck having to draw certain things for like hours <laughs> right okay so um let's see tell our friends we should uh, did we do the the twitter thing or do we always wait to do that until oh just roll with it i'm i can't talk and draw very well yeah that's fine i we got to announce then we do the this is the honorary any questions are welcome not just about weird human pig creatures Though we do prefer those, so you have a better chance of getting your question answered if it's a pig-related question. <laughs> Retweet if you love bacon, am I right? <laughs> Darkest Dungeon, now with bacon. Okay, um, let's see. We are now... So which one of us lives near a subway? Are you hearing yeah, buses outside? Yeah, I think it's Tyler. All right, I'll go turn it down. Um, I'm also going to turn my mic gain down since that seems to be the. Yeah, turn down the traffic, would you? Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go turn. It down. <laughs> um, Are there any questions yet, Kier? No. Yeah, somebody, no uh, Dohan is asking, there's three variations. Yeah, because they're kind of like a little faction. Um, each dungeon in the game kind of has its own faction of enemies. Um, so I want to get um, three or four of these guys that are all obviously in the same um, same kind of group or team or whatever, but they do different things and they kind of look different. I don't just want to have the same, like, uh, hunchback guy with big muscles with just, like, I don't know crown or something <laughs> I want to try and vary it up a bit 
Uh, I'm going to be taking enough shortcuts once I get going that uh, at least at the start, conceptually, I want to try and see if I can come up with some, some different approaches. And then there's a, a big giant boss that you fight. I'm probably not going to get to him, but we'll see. Pretty big. Yeah, he's the biggest one I have to, I've drawn so far. I haven't drawn a three slot yet. Got... That's only three slots? Wow. Yeah, approximately. I mean, where are the dudes here? So are we keeping the guy in the that's the background of this image? He's is he done? Uh, no, it's just a rough. But I think he'll be like the, the one slot standard guy. And then this disgusting pig pig centaur will be the two slot guy. So he's the wait the swine Hulk. Which one's the swine? Yeah, the three. Yeah, the, the or no, Hulk. the mini the two is the mini boss, right? Yeah. Right, and then we also have a whatever whatever we're calling the swine king or whatever. Yeah, the main boss guy. It's a lot of swine. It's a lot of swine. Where is this? There we go. That's why we laid it. We got our first question. Cool. Do you, do you guys have plans to allow the player to make any choices that affect the beginning of the game, like XCOM starting uh, continent or the ship in FTL? From good old Twitchblade17. Oh, Twitchblade. Mr. Twitchblade. Fashioner of words. Um... Is that my way of dodging the question? No, um, I don't know. We're, we're talking a bit about like how much to mix up the starting classes, things like that, just to provide for a slightly different experience for each person's game. But, you know, it's a little different than FTL in the sense like um, it, it is close to XCOM, so that, that makes sense. But, you know, FTM is a true roguelike, or FTL is a true roguelike where you're, you, go, you know, go for a bit and then die, and then it, you unlock more stuff, and then that way when you go again, you have slightly better stuff, and you have better chances of surviving. Um, so I think in this case, the way we're setting up the story and everything, there's certain things that don't really make sense to change, but we might vary up the classes some. Um, I'm guessing when early access starts, it'll probably be fixed. But then as we sort of collect data and, and get more playtesting you know, experience and information, then we might choose to vary that up a little bit so that you compare with your buddy's game. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I got a Hellion right off the bat, but then I had this, this, and that. And you're like, oh, really? I had the Crusader? And, and that could be fun for... Or talking and comparing notes. And their their quirks, now correct me if I'm wrong, Tyler, but their quirks will all be randomized as well, right? So Yeah, when you recruit guys they'll they'll start slightly differently. Um, so that adds definitely a little bit of variation. But um, but yeah, I suppose with XCOM, you know, you've got different you're managing the different nations and things like that. We don't really have that concept in terms of like there's just the town and your roster changes quite a bit and you're probably more invested in your roster in this game than compared to XCOM I, at least I hope um, you know XCOM you care about the guys but uh, they're not that deep whereas here you know they start getting a little bit more of personalities and things like that so you're, you're gonna get attached hopefully so Tyler you're yeah. a self-proclaimed businessman <laughs> I would like you to sell me on the Warrens. What separates it from the other dungeons? Is this like, it sounded like you're reading a script, but it also sounds like your question. So it I'm asking me. for a friend. That's a real question. <laughs> <laughs> sell you on the Warrens. Do you like well, Melissa like more than a friend? <laughs> She's like, yeah, sandbagging me with tough questions. Um, I think Chris can talk about the Warrens. Well, who can say? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, all the all the regions are are different in terms of a few, you know, a variety of different stuff. So, like the obviously the the way they look, um, so the art, you know, is all unique. The monsters are different, so there's going to be different gameplay challenges, um, and that's intentional. So here we are. He's drawn some pig creatures there from the Warrens, um, and the types of things that they do, the types of attacks they do, stuff like that is all. Uh, wow, that armor makes perfect sense. <laughs> actually <laughs> he's, he's got a huge old gut he could be disemboweled so easily so <laughs> that's is that a shield on his stomach um like yeah a, yeah it's like a it's like an old shield if you were a giant pig centaur guy um that's where you'd need protection right yeah so uh 
So as far as selling on it, and then there, there's also different treasures that you can get in different places. So you kind of have reasons to go to the different locations. And um, we don't want to spoil too much about, for example, what different strengths the monsters have in those each, each of those areas, because that's something we kind of want you to have to experience in the game. Like part of the game is learning the ins and outs of each place so that you can assemble a party that gives you the best chance of like surviving there. So I think, you know, what we tried to do really hard is pick four different locations, not counting the Darkest Dungeon, that give a good variety of monsters, like really solid themes that we can pay off in terms of the props, the you know, meaning the things you interact with in the dungeon, the tile sets, the monsters, all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, we have more ideas than we can do. So in the future, you know, it'd be great to bring other dungeon locations in too. But um, we kind of, you know, wanted to give a good variety in, in the ones that are out there. So each one has, has a different feel. Cool. Good answer. Is this our only uh, centaur-like creature? It's the first one. The other one Do you want crazy. to see more, Kira? <laughs> well, I got a crazy centaur-based idea. <laughs> Guy riding the centaur. So I think that'd be pretty sweet. Did you have dreams of riding a centaur when you were a little boy? No, I'm just looking at this pig centaur and then thinking about a little pig on the back. That's the that's the rough idea we have for the <laughs> boss is that he's a three slot and then there's a little piggy back here. <laughs> like wee wee, wee. watch out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the ranged attack for the pig centaur could be like he bucks his back legs up and then flings something at you. <laughs> oh, and you don't want to know what it oh, is. Wait, no, yeah, like a pile of shit, and then it stresses you out and gives you a disease. Yeah, that's sweet. There you go. He'd be like the proverbial pig in slop, throwing stuff at you. Another question. Pig it's, rush hour, it's rush hour on the question bus right now. Okay. In terms of gameplay mechanics, what can we expect from the pig guys as a faction? What makes uh, them unique as enemies? First off, they're pigs. Yeah, they're a little poor sign, but... um. Well, like, okay, I'll give a little, since you guys are on the stream, a little bit of tidbit you can put in your pocket and don't share with anyone. But yeah, uh, generally we don't want to give too much of that stuff away. Yeah. So like right now we're thinking a lot about, uh, for example, in the Warrens, they're probably going to be somewhat blight resistant and disease resistant and, um, but, and cause like blight is basically like poison. So poison and disease. And it kind of makes sense. Like you're going down the Warrens and it's all mucky and you know these beast creatures and it's 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 not a very hygienic area um so heroes that are resistant against blight and disease it, that's a good thing um, down there and then like you know the the pigs i suppose you can just kind of um i mean you can look at them like they've their their strength is in their favor so they're probably going to be high damage um you know some mix of stunning uh, and uh, potentially bleeding stuff like that. I mean, they're kind of a, they're not, they're not a real uh, what's the word? Not eloquent, but I mean, they're they're more of a brute force faction. Um, so shock and awe type attacks, like knocking you back, charging stuff like that. That you've seen a little bit of experiments in that, w like with the skeleton defender. Um, but that's kind of like we're experimenting with different mechanics. But um, these guys are definitely like forceful. The skeletons already feel a lot more like they whittle and chip away at you. They don't have any, other than the big boss that we did for PAX, they don't have any um, insanely huge hitting attacks. So yeah, it might be cool if these guys were a little bit more swing for the fences. Yeah, and like they probably miss a lot, but when they connect it really hurts. So yeah. you, you know, high defense is good, which defense is your evasiveness, meaning how hard you are to hit. Um, that's good, but so is damage mitigation, I guess. I mean, that's just kind of um i guess both of those are always useful but they just look like they should stun you and then maybe follow up with like extra damage if you're stunned things like that and then other stuff in the warrens let me see if i can pull this up here So like props that, um, you know, that's another thing is we, 
you know, if you've seen footage of the crypts, you'll see, oh, it's like a, an Iron Maiden and this and that. And those all make sense in the crypts. But then you're going to see different sort of hazards and things in the Warren, Warrens. Um, it's like piles of skulls and, you know, bodies that people have gone through and just left them in a heap and fissures in the earth um, that, that can be a hazard and uh, that kind of stuff, like rotting corpses. Also, the beast people are kind of have their own organization, you know, in terms of like it's it's almost like, a you know, a beast cult. So there's going to be different sort of altars and sacrifice victims and that kind of stuff that you're going to see down there. You guys ready for another question? Yeah. Shoot. Just trying to do a deformed one. Depression core being very polite. Pardon for my ignorance, but where did the idea for the pig people come from? Um, I don't know, actually. I mean, it's not. It's, like, there's been pig people in other games. I just yeah, didn't want to do orcs. That was part orcs, of it, but, I think. Yeah, but kind of different. Yeah. I mean, we, we talked about beast, like, in the Warrens, it seemed to make sense that um, be some sort of weird beast cult. And... So that just, you know, you kind of think of the different beasts that might mix well and and with with kind of a human type form. The descent, too, I think, was something I've always had in the back of my mind, um, where, like, people used to be here a long, long time ago, and this is what they've kind of degenerated into. I um, thought that was kind of cool. I always uh, pictured the sort of mongrel men from D&D. Yeah. Sort of, like, got sort of different... Like they're humanoid, but they have body parts and things of like various like animals and that sort of thing. They're they show evidences sort of, like... of the highest level of degeneration. <laughs> or like the island of Director Moreau, or something yeah, yeah, like that, exactly. Right? In that in that kind of vein. Mm -hmm. so. so that's why I want the like the wimpy or or the sort of more I don't know the creepy spellcasty skinny version guy to look like kind of deformed and maybe have like he doesn't have two hands. He's got like a big long hoof. That's sweet. I love seeing seeing these articles. Like uh, I just saw online here, because Google Alerts tells me whenever Darkest Dungeon articles show up, and it's like um, Darkest Dungeon Kickstarter reveals new trailer on July third, and it's like, hey, look, um, our new trailer, Terror and Madness, has just come out according to this website. Uh, <laughs> Never mind, that you got came out excited. before the Kickstarter. It's just weird when content gets scraped and posted, and you're like, oh, cool, a new article, and it's like, oh, no, it's their facts are all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Every it's fact in there is wrong. Hey, is that Brennan PM as in the Brennan we know and love? Yeah, I told Brennan we're live streaming, so shout out to Brennan. Brennan PM is a very talented concept artist in his own right. Worked with him in past company. Um, I'm sure he can plug his own site there if he wants, but yeah, he's done a lot of cool stuff. Nice to see you there, Brennan. <laughs> This is and like the one-way talk show. You get to you get to say whatever you want, and then no one can disrupt your timing. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got some suggestions for variants of the uh, the pig guys. Yeah, cool. Let's hear them. Dude, I'm not. I want to look at chat. I'm just. I can't. Because they um, somebody thought that they were all part of a specific different factions. So they're asking if they were going to have any tattoos, piercings, or something that makes them different in appearance. Uh, if there was like multiple pig factions. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, they're all sort of part of the same team. Everybody who isn't you is is loosely affiliated in our game, really. Um, but yes, as a as a concept, yes, I should be working in some kind of thing that says that these guys are all buddies, some kind of uniform thing without mm. making it look too uniform. They all need septum rings. <laughs> oh, this guy should definitely have one because he's the yeah. big, big heavy. Dude. I just thought it. I just thought of that actually. Oh, inspired I'm inspired by that question. That's cool. They need yeah. like a piggy handshake too. A piggy handshake. <laughs> yeah, like the secret. Yeah, the like secret if they meet handshake. and they got cloaks on. They, they have. They, and then they sit there and they both have hooves and then they're like, "What now?" <laughs> you can steal away, man. You're uh, more than well equipped. And, and the hook. for me, for, from an animation perspective, more of the little sort of extra little bits and things they have on them is good because it's good for lots of secondary. So nose rings, earrings, all that kind of stuff. 
Can one of the pig people have a have a gold uh, horn? That'd be cool. There you go, buddy. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. No, no, no. no. I, mean, tusk, you mean? <laughs> I know. I mean, one Sorry. around his neck to blow. Yeah, or like something? the Warhammer orcs do that. Like they're they're the best orcs ever. Yeah. They so they're the orc. They're they? the orcs. Yeah. yeah. Well, some might say Tolkien's orcs. So. Tolkien was yeah. a hack. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Look at me. I'm from England. <laughs> um, to diverge this, here's another question. Something do- totally different from how goes. How does a normal day at Red Hook? Do you guys have some sort of meeting when starting the working day? Is there some sort of routine or is it very fluid? I'm not a game dev, so I don't know much about the actual day to day process. That's cool. Yeah, That's I like those question. sorts of questions. Yeah, me too. Um, it, it's pretty fluid. Um, our team's very small, which is which is helpful. Um, sometimes the bigger you get, the more coordination you have to do in terms of even just making sure everybody's kind of pointing in the right direction day by day. Um, and uh, we we're pretty fluid. I mean, like we meet when we need to, but uh, most of the time, you know, those meetings really just consist of us shouting at each other and being like, "Hey, are you doing that thing? Yeah, I'm doing that thing." And then, um, I mean, Chris and I work together to kind of set the the strategic priorities like hey look in three months we need to have this ready and so we'll talk about that and then kind of break it down we use we use card based like task tracking software like we're using Trello right now but um, there's a million things out there that are like kind of agile development based which just means you're kind of uh, you're trying to get all the tasks listed get them assigned and everybody has visibility of what everyone else is assigned to and and that kind of thing but um, we work in the office like three to four days a week and then at home one to two days a week and we try to coordinate so that we're all in the office more or less at the same time and uh, what do you guys yeah, think? Like we're all at home today because we're all doing this live stream and it's just easier to do it from here than from the office for example mm-hmm. and yeah, we share office space with another game studio uh, so we're kinda all in a room kinda to ourselves but lots of people around during when we're in the office. Yeah. Yeah, we find being in the same room is really helpful. That's that's key cuz you the ability to swivel your chair and just look at someone's monitor is so helpful during yeah. the day. Um, I mean, when we're home, of course we rely on like instant messaging and Google Hangouts and Skype and things like that, but there's no s- substitute for just being able to, you know, look at each other's screens and stuff. Agreed. Yeah. I find it's way more productive when you're actually in the same room with somebody. Mm-hmm. It's a nice break from um, all of us have worked at bigger companies. And yeah, like a lot of places I've been, we did like when I was managing the team before this company, um, you know, every morning was was a quick scrum meeting where we just talk about priorities and, and like that. And, you know, even that just gets, it's a lot like you kind of need to do it, but it's great here just to set a little bigger priorities and let everybody kind of be accountable for finding out how to get from A to B. Well, when there's only five people, it's pretty easy to know what everybody's working on. Mm-hmm. When you have 20 or more, you start to, you have to have, do those scrums and those morning meetings because you may not have an idea what two thirds of the other people are working on. So you want to make sure it's still in line with what you're doing and everybody else is doing and that sort of thing. Yeah. And it depends on the phase of development. Like when um, Kickstarter is a good example. Like Kickstarter was very similar to what it's like when when we'll release, which is then you really there are a lot of things that are extremely time sensitive, and so we'll be coordinating more and more on a day by day basis. Where it might be okay, look, this happened overnight. We need to get this fixed right away, etc. And Kickstarter was like that just because of how much activity there was. Um, so Chris and I were just talking constantly and trying to divvy up like the administrative work and, and you know keeping in touch with backers and resolving technical issues and you know working with the press and things like that and then that rolls down to to you know coordinating with everyone else um, and that that's kind of like you need to be doing it like daily hourly etc. Right now we're lucky to be in full development mode where you know each hour isn't as important. It's just kind of making sure that week by week we're all pointed in the same direction. Dude, KGB said. Uh suggested like a drummer oh that's cool 
And He's got I, the earrings for it. Yeah, and then I thought, uh, <laughs> and I thought it'd, it'd be cool if the drum was like a like a face stretched over the. It's a face, oh, yeah, yeah, stretched over. That's awesome. Well, that's dude. so gonna work. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a great idea. That'll make them really cool and unique from the other guys. Oh, when he plays the drum, it should stress you out. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm always looking for monsters that can cause stress. So, also the audio team will like that. So swine percussion. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm typing. Uh, why is there a huge black bar on the right side of the screen? Oh, um, because my Cintiq is actually only four by three. Um, so that's where the black space is going. Uh, I don't have one of the new um, widescreen dudes. Because, uh, saving my money. Yes, yeah, antiques aren't cheap. No, they're not. Nice. I want a cookie. Is there another question? I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, we got plenty of questions. Will pigmen encounters ever drop some kind of long pork or rations with the implication that they are super uh, dubious? <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> they should drop rations. Oh, we should have like a we could have a, like a thing that is like pork loin and it just functions just like a ration, couldn't we? <laughs> with the chance of giving you trichinosis? Yeah. Or with a chance of turning them into a pig person. So you're camping and then they just jump up and you have to fight them. <laughs> That'd be horrible. It would be horrible. <laughs> it's hard to figure out the tolerance um, for just how much we can screw with people's guys. Like, sorry, he got, you know, depressed and killed himself. Like, that's a pretty extreme thing. And, you know, we've talked about such things happening, but... <laughs> it's it's yeah like that like if your guy turns into a pig guy and you have to kill him and that's that it's it's rough but on the other hand we kind of want at least a few really nasty things in darkest dungeon i mean we've talked about it all along that it's it's uh, unforgiving but it's it's tough to know how far to go with it sometimes we also got suggestions for some sort of truffles to be a part of the pig people's <laughs> oh. existence <laughs> so maybe there's a good chance you can get a sweet mushroom. A couple <laughs> of mushrooms, right? Yeah. Yeah. Could have the mushroom curios. That's awesome. Maybe a, you throw a mush uh, a truffle down on the floor in combat, and then the pigs get distracted. They fight <laughs> each other over it. Yeah. Another question from Dohan. In a similar vein, is cannibalism in the game? As in, will <laughs> heroes go so far off the cliff that they start munching one another? I don't have any probably, cannibalism yet. Yeah, probably not just because to, to be cannibalistic, you'd have to actually manage to kill that, you know, etc. Really? Well, I don't know if you can, you mean just sneak a bite? Like, well, it's, <laughs> it's just. <laughs> Wait a second. Like they didn't eating have to be me dead last night. For it to be cannibalism. Yes, yeah, like wait, I have one less ear than when I went to bed. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Who did it? <laughs> um Well, they could do that as an act out during combat where they just instead of attacking the monsters, they just take a bite out of one of your party members and call it the Mike Tyson. Drop his health and increase his stress. Increase everybody's stress, frankly, if everybody sees that. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably the most stressed thing that could happen. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, like, oh, we're eating each him? other now. Things are that's bad. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's really gotten bad. Yeah. It'd be good especially if, if you have an inventory. Especially if you have an inventory full of provisions and the guy's not eating those, he's munching on a party member. It's like. That's pretty stressful. <laughs> it's it's purely a preference, not a like, not like that's I right. have to, eat to survive. It's like that's that's exactly. Good. It's like he just prefers eating one of the party members, and that's it. Right. That's he gets the up. "I'm good, thanks" quirk. <laughs> <laughs> Dinner time. <laughs> oh, I was thinking this guy was gonna get a lance, Chris. Oh yeah. 
Like, just, I don't know. What yeah, about dual wielding clubs? <laughs> well, it's know, a little bit like this guy's drumming, right? He's got two. Okay, fair enough. I was thinking Lance, like, I was thinking he, like, jousts or something with himself. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah, because he's got, he can... He can trot. He certainly yeah. has the ability to trot. Uh, picks can run pretty fast, man. <laughs> it's terrifying. Yeah, that stand-up guy, <laughs> that stand-up pig must have a hell of a time getting into a trough. It's pretty, yeah. it's pretty bottom-heavy. Is he going to have pants, by the way, like something on his hindquarters? Because is he, or is he going to like stand up for his attack and? He's going to give you the full Monty. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be like all... <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking right there. Hooray! Wee <laughs> 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 wee. Yeah, a big black bar across it. <laughs> so so we got a hair, hair suggestion. <laughs> so can a crazy mohawk be a thing, or is it too far from the theme? I think it's a bit much, unless it what was one of those like off? droopy for a hero. I assume they were thinking about the pigs. I'm not sure. The thing is, a mohawk is so strongly associated with punk rock, and punk rock is well, and the Warhammer orcs, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, and so. the and the troll slayers, and yeah, exactly. Actually, sorry, I guess it's more the is it the dwarves yeah. in Warhammer that all have the yeah. mohawks? Yeah, they're always rocking the piercing yeah. tattoos and. Oh, yeah. Nice. Leather jackets. Oh shit. This is what I gotta do. do. Are the pigs, um. I mean, we want it to be taken seriously too, right? Because it's, it's not like they're a complete comic relief. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're <laughs> killing you. They're not. I guess yeah. they won't be that funny once they're stunning you and impaling you and tap dancing on your head. And forcing your party into cannibalism. Right. Yeah, no, I don't think they're particularly hilarious. I guess just the idea of pig people is funny. I love that helmet. Yeah, that's a... Yeah, I was thinking what if we made him into like a pig gladiator. Yeah. That's cool. That's awesome. I like the lance. That's really good just because we can do the spearing attacks and... Yeah. yeah. Have him charge through the party and yeah. mess him up. Yeah, he can seriously miss you. So I draw really terribly at this stage. I'm actually just worried about getting like ideas down. So I know I like the drummer thing. That's fine. I know this guy's going to be a big dude with a club. I'll figure that out later. Um, I know I want this helmet. It's not a great drawing of the helmet, but I'm actually it's just like shorthand. Like I'm taking notes for later. Um, I'm embarrassed. I, I, about, I think this is fascinating. Thank yeah. you. Super awesome, but. And didn't they have like one arm that was all armored? These yeah, guys. A, yeah, with the bands down the side, just like that. Actually, yeah. The problem with the modern society is that when you Google gladiator, like you just get the movie. That's it for like pages and pages and pages. Yeah. Like I, when you you can't actually find out about real gla gladiators, you can only find out about Russell Crowe. We got a suggestion. Was, uh... I was gonna say, I think there was a like a D and D second edition book, like source book, that was like all gladiator stuff. Should see if I can dig that up. Yeah, Chris, we got a suggestion. There should be room for tusks in the helmet. Yes, that's cool. That's cool. Um, and Tyler, we got a Kickstarter question. All right. Maybe there were answers somewhere else, but I don't bump on it. On Kickstarter, you fund something about 313k. There was a mega goal at about 350k, about cinematic. We did, we don't reach that goal. That mean does, well, are we going to do cinematics? I think is what he's trying to ask. Well, what there was really, the next stretch goal. Yeah, so we didn't make that goal, um, but obviously we want to find ways to tell the story. So. It, it just kind of means like we have to be more economical with doing that and or if early access is a wild success then that'll give us the funding we need to like 
you know, to do more uh, in terms of like go beyond the, I guess, what we currently have funding for. So mm-hmm. what that so it, it's kind of a hard question to answer until what it really does is it puts more emphasis on are we going to get enough money and early access to be able to, um, you know, not only finish the game that we absolutely are going to deliver, but you know, to add more to it. I mean, if we had our way, we would definitely do as much of that stuff as we can. So it, it just depends. It kind of pushes that a little bit into the future to really totally know. Mm-hmm. Cool. Somebody was suggesting, uh, the KGB, Chris, was uh, suggesting a main for the boar people, the swine. Yeah. Maybe he had some hair down his back or something. Oh, yeah. Cool. Or a mohawk on his back. Yeah. <laughs> Would it be a pohawk? I'm sorry. Tyler, come on. We talked about this. <laughs> No, it was weak, we but it's all... <laughs> Can come up with. Somebody else was suggesting a trident, but I think um, I, I just we were already using it, kind of the trident somewhere else. I didn't want. Yeah, to, yeah, we don't want to talk. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume the cove. Yeah, we don't want to cross. Yeah, too badly. I just didn't want to like give away too much about that. So there might be water stuff in the cove. Yeah, with maybe maybe guys with tridents. So. I like the sort of trident and net, like sort of gladiator weapon combo, though. That's uh, did you, I always hated that combo awesome. growing up. Whenever I saw like that gladiator, I was always like, "Fuck! I hope you lose." <laughs> <laughs> I just I hated the trident net. It just looks so hokey. I'm like, just take a sword and a shield, man up, and get it done. You know. I thought I thought tactically it was quite smart, but all right. It it might very well have been. I'm just saying yeah. my childish response was, you're dumb. Right. You look like an <laughs> idiot. <laughs> so God, that would if suck. we had been childhood friends and there was like gladiator toys, we would we'd, never would have no had a fight argument. about them. We'd never have a fight about yeah, it. No argument about which one you want. That's right. You can have the sucky guy with the net and the trident, Brooks. That's fine. So there's this... Um, and we got the better deal. Sword fighting school that's probably in all cities but there's one in Vancouver and and when, I went in there, cities. when I went there there was these kids and they were basically having sword fights with weapons they made themselves out of cardboard wow. did they make a trident and a net out of cardboard hopefully one person just had like a mace it was like it was crazy it was just all these different types of weapons and whacking each other. Cool. cool. So can't see that in kids. Yeah, <laughs> kids hitting each other with cardboard. That's a that's a good way to spend the afternoon. I think I, I spent afternoons doing that when I was a kid. Not under any sort of sanctioned place, but you know, just in. in yeah, I'm a little bit curious about how much that costs. Like, yeah, it's a bit yuppie to take your kids to a specific place to beat each other with cardboard. <laughs> you just wander the alleys and it's like the dog bakery that just opened on Main Street. A dog bakery. Oh, I saw that. Like that they funny. can't just eat. Uh, anyway. Are dogs gluten free now too? I don't know. It's so. That's where, that's where I draw the line: is the dressing of the dog and the feeding them baked things. So. Yeah, that's a little crazy. Yeah. Yeah, the farmers markets have like samples of dog food. Um, Lexos. The reason why. Um, I haven't done anything fancy with his armor is because, like I said, I'm just kind of taking notes. Like, I just wanted to remind myself how, like, what they did to build that shoulder piece, um, and generally, you know, what the helmet looked like, so that I have a better appreciation of the shapes that I want to use. Um, that's really all I'm doing. I'm not going to get into specifically, like, what it looks like just yet, so I might try a version later where it's, like, more organic stuff or more, you know, haphazardly put together, hanging off them a little bit more interestingly. Um, but for right now, I'm just trying to get the ideas down. So, Tyler. Yo. I have a question. Guess who it's from? I'm not sure. It's from Dohan. Okay. 
You have talked Politics. about heroes developing Wait. fears of certain type of enemies. Um, will certain monsters be scared of certain type of heroes, or is it only a hero mechanic? Uh, probably only a hero mechanic. Just because uh, it, it's like monsters don't have stress. They don't have. We're not really trying to simulate the monster's journey through their <laughs> own hard things, which which. Uh, I mean, no doubt they have their own things to deal with. <laughs> Dungeon two no one would be say like it's not hard to be a monster. The trials of a of a lowly pig man. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's more in terms of vulnerabilities. You know, like uh, so a monster might be vulnerable to poisoning, and so plague doctors are good against them. But uh, okay. okay, I got another question. I want you to guess who it's from. Dohan. Correct. <laughs> and lore question. Would there be lore snippets to be found while doing quests? A few pages of journal, perhaps a narrated event? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We got the narrator running all over the place. We'll have little uh, things for him to say when you come to different uh, dungeons and give you background and information as to what uh, you know? Why they're there, and what kind of the general deal is. Um, yeah. so, so the narrator acts as your kind of like lore guide as you go through, and kind of your color commentator. And then uh, one of the stretch goals for, or one of the uh, the reward tiers for Kickstarter was, um, you know, to write your own uh, your own journal and, and get that in there as like a discoverable loot that'll tell a tell a story. Yeah, we'd so love be all over the place. Yeah, like it'd be cool to find things as loot items and that add to the, the feeling. Like we, we've got it currently on the backlog for probably post first early access, but it's something we'd like to do. It would be cool if, um, I don't know what we have planned for this, but if uh, different chapters of the journal were found in different dungeons to encourage people to check out different areas. Mm -hmm. Our favorite named user, the KGB. Uh, <laughs> will there be any pig ladies? Or do you think that would end up an utter disaster? <laughs> you are <laughs> utter. <laughs> oh my god! I just I just sent them the instant rim shot link. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Tyler's got competition. <laughs> his is his is way better. Because he hits you with the pun to start. Or yeah. the order to start, and then in the question as well. Yeah, like you're into the question and like processing it, and then boom, wham, there it is. In comes yeah. the punt. Uh, I haven't, uh, I haven't planned on any pig ladies just yet. Um, they also might be ladies. Who knows? We do have a fair selection of female monsters, though. Yeah, we're certainly not and heroes. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, we're. We sort of just draw what comes to mind and not really. Yeah, and the skeletons just, are pretty androgynous, really. <laughs> you can tell by their hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got a joke question. Can we insta kill a pig man if we shove an apple in his mouth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's how you kill the pigs. You do that after they're dead. Yeah, that's afterwards. I'd hate to see that's you try to. Yeah, <laughs> and lose a I mean, boars are not to be trifled with. I mean, that's when you're, you know, boars look at Robert Baratheon. I mean, <laughs> did you say not to be truffled with? <laughs> oh my god! Sorry. <laughs> god damn it! But yeah, I mean, boars—they <laughs> kill people, man. It would be funny if that was the, like a pig's weakness. Like, he was just definitely allergic to apples, so you just apple in the mouth, <laughs> insta-dead, stick it up. <laughs> I've never done one of those rotisserie pig barbecues. Like your a friend wrestling? of mine actually... <laughs> sorry, go ahead. No. <laughs> I was going to say, a friend of mine actually did that recently and uh, sent pictures, and they had the, not an apple, but an orange in the butt, not in the <clears> mouth. <throat> And I was like, what is that? Is that some kind of... I have it's no like a rookie idea. move. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you had one job. That's right, you had one job.
put the <laughs> apple in the mouth, put the fruit in the mouth. It was an orange for one, so it's mistake number one. And two, it went in the butt, not the mouth. <laughs> so I was like, I was totally, I, I just wrote back, I was like, in wrong end. <laughs> More puns. Was the photo I'm just a selfie? A, I'm just imagining like this big wrestling match where like you're wrestling with this pig and it's trying to gut you and you're desperately trying to like force the <laughs> <laughs> it, like rolling over and over like in the princess bride with the rat and just trying to jam the <laughs> apple into its mouth <laughs> now I'm picturing you wrestling a pig in like a WWE ring yeah <laughs> like as soon as you said wrestling match I'm like okay we're in a stadium we got mm-hmm. this is where a net and a trident would come really in handy because you could put the net over him <laughs> and he'd be trapped and you could have you know a three, you know, like one apple on each tine of the trident and like try to jam it in there. You guys are absurd. <laughs> just, load a, just, just load a t-shirt gun with apples. <laughs> okay, now you're just getting crazy. Is there any more questions? A whole bunch of pigs could be scared of, I think, a hound master. Dogs can be pretty scary. That was something that yeah. somebody said. True. Mm-hmm. I think the Howlmaster could do more damage to other animals, possibly. That might be yeah. a good way of using the uh, the monster tags. Yeah, I mean, in a, yeah, like we have these tags where, like, okay, certain creatures are unholy, certain are beasts, certain are men, certain are eldritch. This is this is both man and beast, right? Yeah, these are man and beast, okay. and I and so some skills do extra damage, and some some uh, quirks and trinkets, things like that. So. So I know fear isn't really in there, but I mean, it's, it's kind of about the matchup. So you might have something that makes you like super good at killing beasts and uh, pigs would be right in your wheelhouse. Yeah, feel free to make a fan tribute game, the pig wrestling or pig WWF. Yeah, <laughs> wrestling a pig in an arena. I have a question for Chris. Is that, is that a cannibal? That weapon that looks like a mace? It's an Aztec sword. Okay. It's like a piece of wood, and then they take obsidian and put it all in, um, along the edge. Right here, squeal. (laughs) (laughs) Right here, squeal. Oh, God. Uh, For those that can't see the chat, somebody typed right in your squeal house. Nice. Um, so yeah, I'm just, uh, I don't think it makes, like, I, maybe these guys would have weapons from dead adventurers, but I don't know, maybe we could go with a bit more of a tribal thing. I'm just, I'm just playing around. It looks it ugly worked. at first. I mean, there's no way around it. I just, I've had to, I hate it about myself. No, but I wish good. it was like, no, some good. people can just like lay down mad lines and it's sweet right, right off the back. I feel like I have to chisel away and just kind of work through it slowly. And I've just gotten used to working that way. So. But I, I think just more ideas comes out of exploration rather than having, like, if you just go in it with, like, I'm going to draw this, and then you just draw it, then you... Then you're done. Yeah. You, well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and you can draw something else. And you can move on, and you can click things in Trello and feel momentarily good about yourself before you realize that you're <laughs> up against this mountain of work that never goes away. Is that too much? That weapon looks I'm like some sort of... I'm not going to argue that because I have a mountain of work, too. <laughs> Yeah, he looks like a pig cricketer. Yeah, he it's does. not totally That's working. It's a bad silhouette. It does not say I'm a, like these guys were like pretty crazy knights, the the Aztec warriors. But um, no. their weapon silhouette doesn't really say I'm a badass so much as it says, "What was the score yesterday?" I still think that looks like uh, some sort of back massage <laughs> item. So, Brooks, we got a question specifically for you. Oh, and your knowledge. shoot. What's that? Do you have a timeline yet for early access? <laughs> for me, do I have a timeline for me for getting my tasks done for early access or for the game being released? I don't think, I don't know if I should, should I answer that one? I'm going to check with the people asked, the co founders of our studio, Tyler and Chris. Am I free to answer that? Yeah. You, you're okay. free to answer um, what we would like to do, not what we are promising that will absolutely happen. Our goals. <laughs> our hopes okay. and dreams. So our plan is to have something for early access by October. 
What was the question? What was the original? What was the actual <laughs> phrasing of the question? What's the uh, time? Was, was it was it when? Actually, no. It was do you have a timeline yet for early access? They didn't ask when, but you just gave them that. So. Okay, that's the timeline. October. Sometime in October. <laughs> do you have Is... a timeline for early access? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have a timeline. A timeline exists. Yeah, and... we're we're aiming for it. We're going to do everything we can to try to make it. And we got to just see if we can get there. We, uh, yeah. There's so much we want to do to the game, and and choosing choosing what to launch early access with and what to add after that is is really hard, because uh, we want it to be awesome and we want you guys to love it. Um, yeah. But we know that it's going to take a while to get the rest of the stuff in. So sometimes it's hard to decide: is it better to just wait, you know, until more is in, or is it okay to launch and let the you know the biggest fans get in there and mess around and help us make it better or so it's tough to say so we're just kind of working super hard right now and going to see where we can get by then yeah i think we just kind of want to get a lot of the core like functionality and like all the gameplay everything working and it's like i mean we just kind of we we have lots of goals that need to happen sort of before that before mm -hmm. we need to make those decisions so the mountain of work that Chris is referring to. Yeah, but and if if we don't make it, you can be assured it's because we're um, we just don't want to release something that you know. All along, we've tried to put our best foot forward in terms of quality and and things like that, and we just want to make sure it's something you guys are proud of. Absolutely. And you'll also be able to get get your hands on it a bit early at PAX Prime, probably. Yes. Mostly. Hopefully. Of which we were, we will all be. Oh yeah, sorry. Hopefully, so we're gonna try. Yeah, yeah. We've always tried to do like do things as well as we could and and hold off on showing things until we thought they were awesome. So we're gonna continue to do that. Yeah, we don't want, we don't want to promise something we can't absolutely deliver on. So it's weird though, like you know, with some of the games that have done really well in early access. I mean it. It can make it possible to do so many great things to the game by releasing early and getting some extra money and all that. So it just depends, you know. But we don't want it to be like, look, here's a here's a bare bones of a thing that says Darkest Dungeon, but you know, hardly anything's going on. We want to make sure there's enough yeah. to keep you busy and playing. But um, so we'll see. Got another question. Speaking of puns. <laughs> We're just be spouting weird jokes during combat. Or will uh, the jester be spouting weird jokes? The jester will be doing jokes. I don't... That's going to happen. He's going to tell jokes. <laughs> Not even like... It, yeah, it'll happen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there. It's in. It's official now. And we'll hope... Yeah. What else are you promising, Kier? Just while you're... Yeah. Jokes. So <laughs> joke, the, the gesture will have jokes. Um, Tyler, did you get that? So you're like typing up the Trello task for Kier right now for that? <laughs> I'll write the jokes <laughs> if we don't. Have, like, if Tyler's busy. No, no, write, no, no. We can crowdsource You need joke. feelings to be able to write a joke. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> um, oh, wait. That programmer joke. It'll just say joke. Yeah, it'll, that's what I'm yeah. saying. It'll just be like, joke. insert humorous line here. Yeah. Um, joke that's funny for you. <laughs> yeah. Localized joke. <laughs> Asterisk no, textual joke. Yeah, it'll be a joke that does enough of a... It's just enough of a joke to... So you know it's a joke. There's probably like a pun a day like website or something, and it could just like like link into that and just, you know, like link it into the game, just like pull from that site and go, there we go. There's a pun. This or boss. maybe XKCD or something. Or I'll just copy and paste the uh, chat puns. Yeah, there you go. And then just, <laughs> just shout right. That's, what, that's, our, that's our secret agenda is for to make content for the game. Is to copy <laughs> the puns out of the chat <laughs> with a gesture. You guys think it'd be cool if this guy was like because he isn't really mobile if he was actually just like a pile of guts. He's terrifying. Oh, he doesn't have legs. Ugh. He's just kind of... 
Well, yeah, like he might have like a leg bone sticking up and it's like barely kind of holding on to some skin or whatever. Like he's like it a is... failed summoned, like they tried to summon up a big one and they kind of fucked it up, so he just kind of came half in and... and so what if his other leg like, was uh, kind of inverted because he's so heavy? What's that? Like, he's only got one leg he can stand on, the other one's just broken, so he's yeah. kind of like... Ugh. And then his guts will be out everywhere. His fucking spleen's here. It's all shiny. That's just gross. So we got a question about a new class. Uh, okay. With regards to the Houndmaster, is the Hound a separate entity or a skill? He's um, he's part of the Houndmaster himself. So um, all the skills, uh, like the skills, some of them are like the hound attacking and some are other things, but, um, but he's, they're effectively one entity. Cool. Yeah. They're one roster hero. hero. Yeah. And we got, um, we got a slot based question for you, Tyler. Do you plan on having any multi-slot bosses where damage to certain slots might affect them differently? Like, if you take out the left tentacle, it changes up the attacks, or if you take out the giant eyeball, it lowers the crit accuracy. <laughs> we, we have talked about it, yes. It's on the, it's on the table. Yeah, it is. Yep. Like, when we, we had a really cool bra boss brainstorming session a few weeks ago, and that was one of the things that came out for sure. Um, you know, like those old arcade build. shooter bosses where, like, if you take out the missile turrets, then he can't shoot the missiles anymore, but he switches to more machine guns or whatever. Yeah. And also the idea that you can, you know, whittle them down and maybe it starts as a four slot and then less and less. And that, that the reason that matters is, you know, your attacks are targeting different things. So when he's a four slot, maybe everybody can hit him with everything they have. But then as he shrinks down, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, crap, if you don't have, you know, like only people who can hit the front rank can hit him. Um, or, you know, we can even do things where we can fill the front ranks with like just obstacles and then he's actually hanging out in the back rank and so your fighters are kind of stuck and you're trying to range to attack him in the back and stuff like that. It's okay. gotta be nice and gross. <laughs> it just gets grosser and grosser. I look at the chat and look back and it's just more terrifying. <laughs> yeah. I have a question for Chris. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Because um, I actually don't, I don't know this. What is the history of cho choosing to do three fingers and a thumb instead of four fingers and a thumb? <laughs> is that just? Oh, sorry, is this is a touchy question. I'll just, I'll retract it. So, so we got this question about music. Uh, when did you get in contact with a bonafide rock star? Also, when did we get to hear more music? The thing with the fingers is, um, it yeah, reads a lot better. It reads a lot better, and it's the right choice for this size of the actual dudes. Okay. Um, but it looks absurd in the promo wallpaper stuff that I did. So I've been fighting this self-loathing and desire to go back and change everybody's hands in all of the wallpapers to have four fingers. But um, I don't have really the hours to to devote to that restoration project. I like it myself. Also, I, it's one less finger I have to animate. <laughs> well, two, technically. Well, you're going to love the hooves on the pig men, then. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this little piggy is hilarious. I just keep looking over from the big guy to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but how did we get in Sorry, contact here, well, with uh, Stuart? Well, oh, the, the rock star question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was a genuine question. I didn't make that up. Yeah, it's funny. So it's good timing, too, because Stuart, so Stuart Chatwood and the Tea Party, they just um, they just started releasing songs on their new album. I think they just released, I think they released their first single to iTunes just like last week. Um, it's pretty awesome. And they're doing, you, you can follow them on Facebook and Twitter, and they're like doing all these uh, photo shots and recording and video, you know, in their studio in Toronto and stuff. It's pretty neat. Um, 
And then when he gets back from that, he's coming back this month to Vancouver. He lives in Vancouver. Um, then he's going to be starting in hardcore on Darkest Dungeon. So um, we should have some new music pieces by the time PAX runs around. Uh, or mu- like the, he did the music in the trailers, but we'll have some music in the game by the time PAX rolls around. And So yeah, Chris and I have been working with him. That's pretty cool. As far as uh, getting in touch with them, it's really funny because... He's done a bunch of game stuff, um, but we didn't get in touch with him via games at all. We just got in touch with him because, um, oddly enough, my my girlfriend and uh, used to work with his wife, and then we were walking down the street, and, <laughs> and they saw each other, and then we had to make conversation while they were chatting, and then it turns out that you know we're making an indie game, and he's been wanting to do more indie music. So it was really funny. It just happened. Yeah, like but that. the rest of that is you come to the office and you're like, oh, some guy I met who's in a band or something maybe wanted to do the music. And I was like, oh, okay. What what's the band? I don't know no. the Tea Party because Tyler's American and the Tea Party was huge in Canada. I was like, what? The actual Tea Party? He's like, yeah. I, is that a what? What? Well, no, I knew the songs, <laughs> but I, my yeah. I'm, uh, anyway. I'm like, that was the band of my university. Yeah, it's the Canadian content thing of any Canadian man that's big enough to be outside of Canada is even bigger in Canada. Yeah, and it, it was funny. cool because he he did a bunch of the Prince of Persia music, and uh, you know, not only was he kind of wanting to get, do some more game music, but um, when I started telling him about the game, like that, he just loves. I mean, I mean, the Tea Party bears this out too. It's just he he loves the Gothic you know, dark sort of medieval influences. Like personally, he's just super into it. So um, at that point, we, it was like, gosh, I don't know, Chris, it was like you and I and the idea still. Yeah. <laughs> it was last year before we really had broken ground, before we released the first trailer, all that kind of stuff. And uh, so it was neat because he's like just wanted to get involved from a, you know, a passion standpoint. He thought what we were doing was cool. And then when we, you know, started gaining momentum, then I think it, um, was cool for him also just because he was already interested just personally and then um when he saw that we actually sort of knew what we were doing (laughs) (laughs) i mean because really right he didn't know us from adam really and um then you know dude on the street like well yeah like it's hey i'm making a game you know so is everybody um (laughs) so yeah it's worked out really well and we're we're super excited to um to get into the next phase of you know where he's composing for the game specifically and we're it's gonna be awesome and i got i think we have time just one more question that's kind of important oh yeah um, what's this big guy his name well we don't we don't do a lot of names and lore in the game things are kind of named what they are um so you he'll probably be horrible. like the s- swine monster <laughs> i don't know i well, think it's something that's got like the period language to it but we don't have like that whole like he's deal thor the you know with all the kind of traditional high fantasy tropes attached to it i guess um so he'll yeah. have a name that's kind of more like nameless you know in that pulp pulp kind of fiction kind of lovecraftian sense of the way that big <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's on the nose for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big Man Three. That's a good. We better vacate the channel, though, huh? Uh, yes. And you can catch us next week, and we'll be doing a Tyler fights live. Oh, cool. Don't know if Tyler knows about that, but that's definitely what we're doing. So <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do another uh, another stream of the game and um, show off some of these new enemies. Uh, I'm going to get out my net and try to dust them off for next week. Shut up. I love it. Nice. You're going to look ridiculous, but okay. Thanks for the support, everyone. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Yep. Thanks for uh, coming and hanging out. And yeah, next week we'll do a total change of pace. No technical difficulties. Guaranteed. Hashtag not guaranteed. It's a Tyler (laughs) Sigmund guarantee. Everyone Tyler Sigmund personally that. guarantees there will be no technical <laughs> difficulties next week. Okay, thanks for joining us, everyone. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye, Good everybody. Night. Good night.